Okay, let's be real. There are way too many AI models out there, and every week a new GPT killer drops. But are they actually any good? In this video, I'm going to rank the most popular AI models from S chair to total flop. Whether you're building with AI or just curious which one are actually living up to the hype, this list will save you time and probably a few headaches choosing which one to use. All right, let's get into it. So there are so many models out there. You have O1, O1 Pro, Grog 3, Gemini 2.0 Flash. Actually pretty good that just released. You also have the experimental models that are not listed here. This is actually a tool that I found online that is an AI model cheer list maker. And you guys are probably familiar with the standard S, A, B, C, D, F cheer list. So I'm going to pick my best model on the list on the right and then tell you which one are my favorite model to use. All right, so let's start with O1. Where do I think O1 rank on that list? So when O1 came out, I was actually a really big fan of it, use it quite a lot. But then with the release of, of R1 by DeepSeek and more models like Grok3, I found myself using it less and less. And one thing that I don't like about O1 is how it actually keeps the output window quite small. So when you generate an output, it tends to be very, very concise. And sometimes I like when my thinking model actually stretches its output with more information. So if you are looking for something a bit more concise, I think O1 can be actually good for that. But overall, I don't think it's like one of the best model or my go-to model out there, I will say, because this is a personal list, not necessarily based on, you know, current benchmark and ranking, but this is more how I personally use them and where I think they fit on my list. So for O1, I rank this as an as a B. I, it's not an S chair. This is not something that I that is my go-to per se that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I wouldn't rank it on an S or A chair yet because I mean this is just not my my go-to model. All right. So the next one is O1 Pro. So I actually haven't used O1 Pro because you need to have a you know a, a Pro account to use it. So. I haven't used it yet, so I'm not going to add it on the list, and I'm just going to skip it to Grok3. So surprisingly, Grok3 being one of the models that I actually use the most right now. Uh, the, the convenience of it is that I'm already paying for X, and I actually really like you know the way it it reasons and the way it output its answer. So for anything that doesn't involve doing mathematics, that is more like you know thinking about processes, marketing, copy writing. I tend to gravitate more to a Grok3 than other model. And I've in some cases, I've seen myself using it even more than ChatGPT. For example, when I'm generating PRD for my applications or implementation step, I tend to use Grok3 over any of the other model. So Grok3 is going to go in a chair for that reason. I really like the deep research and the thinking model. And I like the fact that I can use it just straight up from um, Twitter so, uh, straight up from X because it also has you know all access to all the database of X so I find it really helpful also for writing copy so I definitely think it is definitely a chair now we have Gemini 2.0 flash so Gemini is extremely cheap I mean it's the cost for using it is much cheaper than most models and I find that's a huge advantage over the other models because it's not it's not worse than the other model and is is oftentimes just as good. So and in some cases even better. For example, with the more recent models from Gemini, I've been really excited with this capability of generating, for example, applications. So if you use for example 2.5, it's really good at generating a full application from scratch. And I think 2.0 is getting close to that level. It's it's just at, it's not just as good, but it's quite close. And I find myself using it when I need something. I will say uh, that is just as good as something I would get with other thinking model, but not as expensive. So I think it's a really good model to use if you have an app and you want to provide people with a free chair. I think Gemini 2.0 is like a great model for that. So for that reason, I think I'm going to put that in a chair because I think this is super helpful to have that. Now, GPT-40 Mini is not one of the cheapest models out there, but it's one of ChatGPT or an OpenAI cheapest model. And then I'm a huge fan of it. This is always my go-to model to code. Actually, in my cursor rules and WinServe rules, I have a mention that says that to always use GPT-40 Mini for any OpenAI implementation because I just found that it's like 
it's like a great model that is able to do really good outputs in terms of like coding and then writing. And I find myself to use it times and times again, and even times sometimes more than GPT-40. Now, this is without taking into consideration the recent update that were made to GPT-40, because GPT-40 was, I had some model improvement in terms of app development and also in terms of image generation. So, so this is, you know, getting a little bit tricky, but I think I'll put GPT-40 mini in my S tier list because that's one of the models that I use by far the most. So this is why I'll put it there. So next we have GPT-40. So just for the, the power of this model for generating, if being multi-model, generating images and then generating, you know, text and quality and also being the full-fledged model of GPT-40 mini, I think this thing deserves an S chair right from the get-go because, I mean, it's just incredible. The thing that you've been able to do with that using, for example, the image generation are so cool. So the fact that you can just write text, you like text generation and image generation in this, the same interface, I think makes it into an S chair model because I think so far out of all the models that we've seen, it's one of the best multi-model uh, thing that we've seen out there. So next is O3 Mini. So O3 Mini is, is currently like, you know, one of the best uh, reasoning model by OpenAI. And, you know, we find, you know, obviously considering OP, O3 and O3 High, O3, which I believe is going to be releasing in the next couple of weeks. But O3 Mini so far has been my go-to model when I need to do anything that pertains to the task of reasoning. If I have some, some math, some calculation that I need to get done or some financial estimates, things like that, whenever reasoning is very mathematics, I tend to use O3 Mini for that very purpose. Uh, for anything else, I don't find myself using it that much. You know, whenever I have thinking needs, I tend to go toward O3 or O1. I don't actually use O3 Mini that, that much. Um, this one is a bit tricky because I want to put it in the A chair for mathematics, but because I don't just don't use it that much, and it's not my one of my go-to model over Grog3 or the other one, I think I'm gonna put this into a B chair because this is just not one of the models I use the most. I only find it useful for very specific use case. And then this is ranking my best model based on how I use them on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, so so yeah, so I'll put that into B chair. Now we have Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. So before the release of 3.7 Sonnet, that was my go-to model. I was using it daily and daily, but I had my, you know, my love and hate relationship with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet because I was often very frustrated with the code and sometimes I would like switch to O1 to try to see if I would get a better result or switch to DeepSeek. And just, I just wasn't really uh, happy with some of the output. And it got to the point where I started actually using Cursor with DeepSeek v3 and gypsy r1 of a 3.5 sonnet but uh but yeah but just because it was like it was like a, one of the good model before we had access to those thinking model i think it kind of deserved uh, to be in the b chair list um but considering the fact that we have 3.7 sonnet unfortunately this is actually moving its ranking a little bit down and i think i'm gonna put that into c chair this is gonna be our, our first c chair so far now we have 3.7 sonnet so 3.7 Sonnet has been really, really good with app development. It's my go-to model right now, including with the reasoning model. Uh, it is it is really, really good. Uh, it's been, I use it, I mean, literally daily because I'm coding with that. And, but I'm not like super, super happy with a, a, a big portion of its output yet. And in my head, it doesn't f feel like it is an S chair model when HR model, because I tend to fight with some of its output times and times and times again. I don't think it has reached what I'm expecting it to be in terms of app development, but I've been quite impressed by a lot of its, uh, I guess, results. So I think I'm gonna put that into a, a B chair because uh, it's, it's like close to my expectation, but I tend to switch between that and its reasoning model a lot, and then if I had to choice between using the reasoning model of 2.7 Sonnet uh, all the time versus 3.7 Sonnet, I would probably go for the reasoning model. So that's this is why I'm gonna put this one into B chair because it's a really good model, just just not up to my to the standard of expectation that I have for what it can do. And this is why I'm gonna put Cloud 3.7 Sonnet in A chair because this is 
I find the model that I use the most, and especially when you're using it with uh, cloud code, I've been able to get really good output with it that I've been really happy with. But, uh, but unfortunately, it hasn't reached my expectation in terms of a model for the S tier list. I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to release, you know, a new model uh, very soon that's going to uh, achieve all those expectations where we're going to get less, you know, buggy application where it's not going to try to, for example, generate codes and errors that I didn't ask it to. But this is a bit tricky because this is pairing prompt engineering and the quality of the model. But I find that even with my prompt engineering skills, where I'm able to really structure um, what it needs to execute, sometimes there are uh, weaknesses in how the model execute them that I'm not really satisfied with. So this is going to be an H chair. Now, Gemini 2.5 Pro. So 2.5 Pro is, a, is actually really quite impressive. I used to use Manus to generate app entirely autonomously. And Manus was able to build most of the application with a lot of you know small little bugs. But what surprised me when I used 2.5 Pro is that it was actually able to create most of the application almost bug free. And it's able to think a lot better than some of the other coding model. And I think right now that probably is one of the best models that we have out there right now for coding and for other applications that involve reasoning. So for that reason, I think Gemini 2.5 Pro right now is the first S tier model that we have for app development. So I'm going to put it up there. So the next model that I'm going to be ranking is DeepSeek. So DeepSeek has had three different models that came recently. There's the, the updated version of DeepSeek V3, and there's also the DeepSeek V3 that came before. I'm going to rank them side by side because I'm very familiar with DeepSeek V3, but honestly, I haven't used it that much. I tend to gravitate more toward R1. And if I don't have access to R1, I'd rather just not use it. I rather use the model that I tend to, to use like ChatGPT or, or Cloud or Grok. So this is not a, one of the models that I tend to use on a day-to-day -day basis. And for that reason, I'm going to put it in a D chair just because this is not one of my good to model. And it is cheap, but it's just not a model that I use on a day-to-day -day basis because I have access to other models that I can use. And Gemini has quite a, a good pricing as well. Uh, so it's still like a D chair model, but you know what? Because it's such a cheap model, I think I'm actually upgraded to C. And I think this is where we're going to put the, the deep tick model right now, because I don't use it in that much. But if I had to use a model that was cheap or almost free, I would, I would gravitate toward those ones. Then we have R1. So when R1 came out, that was by far one of the models that I was using the most. I was getting, I will get really frustrated when I didn't have access to it. And I was, in, for the most part, very satisfied with the app of the R1. I think R1 is really smart. And I think that R1 outputs right now in my head is like very similar to the output that I get with Grok3. So I don't know if you ask me to pick between the two, I mean, the only difference factor would be the interface rather than the model itself, because I'm, I really like R1. For that reason, I'm going to put all those R1 that we're seeing right here in the A chair, because this is the one that, uh, this is where I think they fit best. And then, you know, I think it's right on part with Grok3 right now in my head when I'm using them. Now, uh, now we're going to rate Queens. So Queens, I've used it just for like a, a couple of few prompts. And I, honestly, I wasn't happy with the output. I didn't, I, I, the, the problem with Queen was just the quality of how I generated the output. I, it's a really smart model and it, you know, it has like, you know, good thinking and so on, but I wasn't happy with, let's just say that the output wasn't as descriptive as I expected. And when I would ask it to improve it or like give like some indication of how I wanted it to output it, I just wasn't really happy with the result. I don't, that wasn't a model that I started using and started thinking, you know what, I need to start using it every single day because it is just so good. This is not, that wasn't my experience with Quinn. And I've heard some good thing about Quinn from other people, but when I use it, I just didn't think that it fit, it, that it fit into some of the model that I'll be using. So for that reason, I'm going to put that into D because I just, you know, it, it can generate output, but I'm not totally satisfied with the output that it generate. So that would be just a model that I only use if I really don't have a choice and I have to use it. So this is why I'm going to put it in this list. Now, we have Lama 3.370B, 
and we have Gemini 2.0 flashlight. So flashlight, I've used it, I'm using like Gemini and Gemini Studio and I want to do, for example, deep research or stuff like that. I tend to use that and I'm actually happy with the outputs. Uh, so I'm thinking that it's not an e chair in my head for, for, for now, but I'll probably put it into a B chair list. Now we have GPT 4.5, which by the way, um, OpenAI said that was the best model for writing by far. That hasn't been my experience. I'm not sure if it's a lack of better prompt engineering with it specifically, but the same prompt engineering that I use for generating thing for with GPT 4.0 and with uh, 4.5, I don't really see an advantage of 4.5 over my output from GPT 4.0. And for that reason, I've been actually using GPT 4.0 to generate text or to write rather than GPT 4.5, even though it's, you know, it's say that it's one of the best models out there for writing, that hasn't been my experience so far. And for that reason, for me, I think that I'll put that into the C tier list. Now we have Llama 3.370B, and honestly, I haven't used Llama 3.370B uh, that much, so I'm not really familiar with Llama because I haven't, you know, used it yet. I'm planning to use it in the next couple of weeks and maybe make a video about it while I'll cover it. But so far, this is my, my list of my top chair AI model that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And yeah, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Make sure to comment below and let me know what is your S chair list and what you'd like me to cover in the next video. Make sure to check the video right there and I'll see you guys in the next one.